Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to give my no vote explanation. Like uh, many of my colleagues, I kept an open mind on this appointment. I had hoped that things would change after the last director left. Unfortunately for the people of the state of Michigan, the interim director has not indicated that she would do anything substantively different to improve the department's response to this pandemic. When asked at the February Senate committee hearing what the biggest mistake was that the department had made in managing the pandemic, her response was, quote, it is difficult for me to say what would have been a mistake or what I would have done differently. That seems unbelievable to me. Uh, early on, you could buy the essential recreational marijuana, the essential booze, the essential uh, lottery tickets, but you couldn't in the spring and the summer go and purchase paint and wood chips and do all of these outdoor activities because those were dangerous, but uh, booze, marijuana, and lottery tickets were essential. You could uh, paddle your kayak and your canoe, but you couldn't take a motorboat. That was dangerous. Uh, you could go and fill your tank 20, 10 customers go fill the tank of gas and mow their lawn, but you couldn't hire one guy to fill one tank because that was dangerous and have that person mow your lawn. This, this stuff is just unacceptable. The administration's executive order to put COVID-infected patients into the same facilities as our most vulnerable uh, through her order 2020-50, which by the way, I keep hearing it was, uh, it was um, voluntary. The language is very clear. You must create these uh, dedicated units under penalty of misdemeanor, so it wasn't voluntary. Yet she still could not think of anything at all that could have been done differently by the administration. The families who loved, wa loved ones in these nursing home fiasco deserve to know why. They deserve to know why the administration is still stonewalling on the nursing home deaths. How many died in the nursing home? How many contracted it? How many went to the hospital and died there? We can't get these numbers. It is stonewalling up and down the line. These victims families deserve this information. When asked what metrics the department is using and when they would indicate that the state is out of the pandemic, uh, Director Hertel said, quote, I don't believe there is a way to put a threshold number that says here's yes and here's no. This is unacceptable. We need some kind of matrix. Upon questioning by the Senate committee, the interim director provided vague and abstract answers, refused to provide specific metrics used to make decisions, refused to offer follow-up answers to specific questions. Nothing, absolutely nothing has indicated that anything is going to be new under this new director. The same one-size-fits-all, strong-armed, unconstitutional approach will continue. According to the Michigan Rep uh, Restaurant Association, last year, Michigan was the only state in the country closing restaurants without a data-driven metrics to guide the decisions. Over 3,000 restaurants in the state have already closed permanently while Michigan's unemployment rate is among the worst in the nation. The orders given by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services have closed down restaurants, stores, disrupted schools, changed uh, families' uh, lives forever, and without demonstrating the science for the decisions. And despite all the unconstitutional orders, our state's response to the COVID pandemic has been chaotic at best. Michigan deserves better answers from the department than we have gotten before. The, people trust in the people's trust in government cannot be maintained if their leaders, elected or otherwise, are not transparent and fail to listen to the people they serve. I cannot in good conscience vote to affirm the new director when I see no signs things will change. Thank you.